And how long for opening and closing? Uh, one and a half minutes for opening and closing, and okay. then one minute for each question. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to tonight's candidate forum for Brentwood Union School District Governing Board Member. My name is Chris Gray, Adult Services Librarian at the Lafayette Library and Learning Center. Uh, tonight's event is a partnership with several organizations, the League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley, the County Elections Department, and CCTV. We're streaming live on Facebook and video coverage will be available online after the program on the Library and County Elections Department websites, as well as the League's Voters Edge website. Please join me in welcoming our, moder our moderator for this evening, Anne Flynn, past president of the League of Women Voters of Diablo Valley. She's a former elected member of the Walnut Creek School Board and retired from the U.S. Department of State as a Foreign Service Officer. Thank you very much, Chris. It's uh, good to, uh, to be here and good to see you. Um, uh, welcome to uh, today's event. And as Chris said, I am Ann Flynn and I'll be your moderator. So thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, the League is uh, pleased to be able to sponsor this forum uh, along with the library, CCTV and um, the elections department. Uh, this forum is to present candidates running for the Brentwood Union School District. There are two open seats and four candidates. Candidates participating in tonight's forum are Twee Dow Jensen, Blythe Lind, Stephanie Williams Rogers, and candidate uh, not participating this evening is Carlos Sanabria. The League is a nonpartisan organization, does, the, does not support or oppose any candidate. We are here tonight as part of our key mission to educate and inform voters. The form the forum is being recorded and will be live streamed on CCTV, on Facebook, and later shown on the libraries and the league's YouTube sites. Before the program began, the names of each candidate uh, were selected at random to determine the speaking order. Closing statements will be in reverse order. Each candidate will give a one and a half minute opening remarks and then a one and a half minute closing statement at the end. During the question and answer program portion, I will alternate whom I call upon first to avoid giving any candidate an advantage or disadvantage. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. If they wish, each candidate will have an opportunity for two rebuttals of one minute each upon their request. We have two uh, League of Women Voters timers available uh, for, the, for this evening uh, that are visible to the candidates. As a speaker reaches the end of uh, their allotted time, the speaker will see a yellow card with a 15 second warning and when time is up, you'll see a red card. Uh, now we will proceed uh, with our one and a half minute opening statements, beginning with Twee Dow Jensen. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good evening. My name is Twee Dow Jensen, and I'm running for Brentwood Union School District. Um, I am a um, the Brentwood Library Commissioner and a former education professor, where I uh, taught diversity and equity courses to pre-service teachers. I'm also a parent in with children in uh, Brentwood Union School District, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm, I want to make a big difference in our community by strengthening our public schools and here in Brentwood. Thank you very much. Um, and next we'll hear from Stephanie Williams Rogers. Hello and good evening. Um, my name is Stephanie Williams Rogers and I'm running for Brentwood School Board to ensure every student receives a quality education and that our school district is responsive to the values, beliefs, and priorities of our community. As a parent, I know firsthand each child approaches learning in their own way and is an individual with unique perspectives and needs. And this is why we need leaders who will turn over every stone to find the right solutions for improved student learning and achievement. 
I'm an advocate for educational equity and serve as board president of a local nonprofit that offers after school programming, homework help, and parent leadership. I also have a track record of public service and currently serve as the chair of Brentwood's Park and Recreation Commission, the Youth Commission Liaison, as well as our county's district representative on the uh, Family and Children's Trust Committee. As a healthcare management professional, I work with government business organizations and other key stakeholders to support youth resiliency and advance health equity. I wouldn't bring my experience, the spirit of engaging others and the ability to get things done to our school board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And now finally, Blythe Lind. Thank you, good evening. I just wanted to take a minute to thank everyone involved in making this forum possible tonight. My name is Blythe Lind, Le Blythe Lind and I am currently serving on the Brentwood Union School District Board of Trustees, and I'm running as an incumbent candidate on November 3rd. I've lived in Brentwood for 18 years. I'm married and I have two school-aged children, one in 11th grade and one in 8th grade. I very much enjoyed being involved in serving our community. I've had the privilege of serving on the Parks and Rec Commission for nine years. I have a degree in elementary education and have taught fourth and fifth grade. I've been a parent in our district for over 11 years. And as a parent, I believe it's important to be an active participant in our district. I've been a part of parents club, school site council, art judgment program, district budget focus group, strategic action plan committee, parent leader group, co-chair of the Measure B campaign, and currently serve as the vice president of the Brentwood Education Foundation. During this year on the board, I've learned a lot and gained a great deal of experience. I've enjoyed collaborating with district leaders, teachers, staff, parents, and students. I'd appreciate the opportunity to continue to grow, learn, and move our district forward in a positive direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fly. And all candidates, um, we're happy to have you. And for the next half hour or so, I'll ask questions. I'll do my best uh, to ensure that each candidate has the opportunity to answer each question. Personal attacks are not permitted. Statements made about other candidates must be on the public record or they will not be allowed. And our first question goes to Stephanie Williams Rogers. And the question is, what issues made you want to run for office? What in your background uniquely qualifies you to serve? And Stephanie, you're on mute, I see. Yes, um, well, first of all, I am a parent. Uh, recently had uh, two of our teenagers go through Brentwood Union School District. Uh, we have an eighth grader currently in the district, um, as well as a soon to be four year old. So I have, a, I have recent and relevant experience working with our schools and our teachers, um, as well as a vested interest in the learning outcomes and student achievement. Um, which is one of the reasons why I'm running, is to be able to deepen the engagement between our students, um, our teachers, and our community to be able to uh, look for opportunities that will help to strengthen our district, um, help support our teachers with uh, providing learning outcomes for our students, and being able to uh, provide a fresh perspective for our board. I believe that uh, my experience with um, as board president of Village Community Resource Center, which is a local nonprofit, as I mentioned, um, here in Brentwood, uh, we are focused on educational equity. We um, work with our students to ensure that they get the additional support to help support their learning and achievement. And so with that, um, I believe I am qualified and experienced. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Next, uh, Blythe Lind, same question. Why did you run for office and what in your background qualifies you? Thank you. Um, I think starting with the what qualifies me, I've been a parent in the district for over 12 years and have been quite involved on many different levels. I started at the school and then moved up to being involved um, to share my voice at the district level. Um, I, like I said earlier, I have a degree in elementary education, so I have a background as a teacher. And I think when you bring the perspective of a parent, a teacher, and an experienced board member to the table, you can offer several different perspectives, which will help you in challenging situations when you have to make hard decisions. I can look at it from all those different angles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Twee Dow Jensen. 
whoops, you're on mute. Thank you. Yes. Um, when my daughter enrolled in kindergarten several years ago, um, I noticed they didn't have any state certified art and music teachers for K-3 students. And so I wanted to see, you know, who was making these decisions about um, not having state certified art and music teachers in the classroom. Um, I started attending school board meetings. Um, I started fundraising with the school PTA. And the more I learned about um, the decision making process, the more I wanted to get involved. Um, my background, I was a former elementary school teacher. I'm also a former education professor at the University of Southern Indiana. I taught diversity and equity courses. And so I prepared pre-service teachers entering the teaching profession. My life's work has been in public education and I am a strong advocate of making sure the diverse needs of our students are met. Thank you very much. Now, our next question, uh, we'll start with Blythe Lind. And the question is, what is the COVID-19 pandemic impact on the budget? Are there sufficient financial resources to provide the education students need? I think that the budget for COVID will always be an issue. Um, of course, there has been significant costs and there will be that we don't even know about yet. Um, I think that currently we've been able to acquire the PPE that we've needed in case we are able to open in a safe manner. I think one thing we need to worry about with the budget is looking forward and how we are going to need to um, make smart choices in the years ahead as the budget becomes more challenging as I predict COVID will have an impact on you. Thank you very much. And next, Tui, uh, if you would uh, answer the question about the COVID-19 pandemic and the budget. Yes, um, I understand the pandemic shutdown has disrupted California's economy as state revenue is down 23%. So um, from what I've been reading, public schools in California will need $20, $20 billion next year in order to prevent widespread layoffs and budget cuts to essential programs. Um, that's why I'm advocating on my social media accounts that voters vote yes on Proposition 15, the School and Communities First Initiative. Voting yes on Prop 15 will close corporate tax loopholes and collect more, much needed taxes to fund our public schools, increase healthcare services to fight this pandemic, and social services to prevent homelessness, as well as preparing for future disasters such as wildfires and earthquakes in our communities. And um, from what I've been reading, the estimated revenue for Brentwood Union School District, if Proposition 15 passes, is $5 million. Um, we've been having school budget shortfalls before the pandemic, but I really think um, the passage of Proposition 15 will very much help our public schools. We'll have a chance to talk about that again uh, later. Now, finally, uh, Stephanie, um, if you'd like to comment on uh, the COVID-19 impact on the budget. Uh, yes, I believe that COVID-19 has uh, a current impact on our budget as well as an uh, impact that we don't know of um, as we continue to look at reopening our schools. Um, in addition to the budget and reopening or even just the impacts of COVID, um, when we think about uh, our budget and our annual goals and still being able to support our students in those learning achievements, I'd like to see um, everything on the table um, to help craft these annual goals. And I'd like to ensure that our teachers are represented on the front end um, of the goal setting and of the needs of our students in our, our classrooms um, throughout this process. Um, so yes, I do believe there is an impact on our budget as it relates to COVID. Um, and we will need to solve for that and keep monitoring things um, that are happening with our economy. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Stephanie. So the next question, uh, uh, Twi, if, if you'll start. Um, today, under COVID-19 uh, pandemic restrictions, do you support face-to-face -face instruction, distance learning, or a hybrid model? What is best for safety of students, families, teachers, and staff? I think we really need to heed the warnings of public health experts. 
I'd like to see more um, COVID-19 testing and tracing before we safely open our public schools. Um, I think that these preventative measures or you know, proactive measures um, will really help us to keep the transmission of COVID-19 down. Okay, thank um, you. Including the increased use of face masks and diligent hand washing. All of those things are very necessary. Thank you very much. Uh, Blythe, what do you think uh, about uh, the a hybrid model or face-to-face -face education or distance learning? What is best for safety? Well, this is a very familiar topic to me as I'm serving on the board currently, and I'm a member of our reopening task force committee, which has been meeting ever since June. And uh, I think the priority of the district and my own personal view is that the health and safety of our students need to come first, as well as our teachers and staff. We need to make that our highest priority. Um, I think right now, the safest way um, of learning is distance learning, and we've tried very hard and improved since the spring and created a very strong and robust distance learning curriculum for our students. As we start to see the tiers change and it becomes a little more safe, I certainly think that um, you know learning in a hybrid model that is safe where we can meet all of the standards is something to consider. I think the mental um, strain on our teachers and families and Thank you very much, Blythe. Now, uh, Stephanie, um, what uh, do you feel about face-to-face uh, -face instruction versus in-class or a hybrid model? What's best for safety of students, teachers, and staff? Uh, Stephanie? Yes. Thank you. The first priority is the safety and welfare of our students, teachers, and staff um, as we think about reopening our schools. Um, in addition, there isn't a one-size-fits-all in my perspective. We have certain parents right now who are ready to have their students return back to the classroom. Uh, we also have parents and families who are reluctant, even when schools do reopen, to send their students and their children to school. And so we need to be mindful of that as a school board um, when we think about reopening and supporting our students. As it relates to... Um, uh, Excuse me. Uh, reopening. I would like to. I would like to see a phase uh, priority plan where we can have certain students come back uh, quicker than others if needed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. The next question. Uh, we'll start with you again, Stephanie. Uh, what are teachers' rights concerning COVID safety? Will teachers be able to choose to work at home or school when students are back in the classroom? Um, I believe that the, that teachers have the right to work in a safe environment. And we need to be able to provide that as a school district when considering reopening schools and having a plan in place that will protect not only our teachers, but our students and our staffs in the classroom. I believe that they do have a right and a say so in terms of how and when we do reopen. And there may be some teachers that are reluctant just as some family members and parents are. We need to be able to have a dialogue about that um, when we think about reopening schools and what that looks like. Thank you very much. And now next, Blythe, um, what do you think uh, the teachers' rights conserving, uh, concerning COVID safety are? Will teachers be able to uh, work at home or, uh, or choose to work at home or choose to work in the classroom uh, with distance learning? Uh, I, I absolutely think that teachers are the backbone of our school system. Um, they are what makes it run. And I think that they have done an amazing job of stepping up and really making this distance learning program work. I absolutely feel that they have the right to work in a very safe environment and that that should be provided for them as well as a plan of how we're going to move forward. And they have every um, right to have a say and be involved in the process of going back to school. Thank you very much. 
Uh, now the uh, next question, oh, I'm sorry, Twi, you need to, uh, to have a chance to answer this one as well. Will uh, teachers have an option of being able to work at home or in the classroom when the students are coming back? That's, I think it's hard to say if it's a choice or not a choice. It's whether or not the transmission rates have gone down to you know, a, a controlled number. Um, I think teachers' health and the, you know their working environment must be. Um, we we must take that into account when we're thinking about opening up schools again. I think most teachers would want to go back to schools. I don't really know anyone who's you know excited about teaching online, um, but I really want to make sure that it's um, a safe environment for our teachers because they have families too, and they have children too. And um, the most important thing is to make sure that our teachers remain healthy and our students remain healthy. Thank you very much. Now our next question, uh, Blythe, if you'd uh, take a turn, uh, for the first turn on this one. How do you ensure that all students have access to the technology and resources they need for distance learning? Um, I think our school district has done a wonderful job of stepping up. We've provided over 4,000 laptops for our students. And um, I believe that the needs are being met. We check in with them and at any time that there's an issue um, with our families being able to connect, we work with them to provide them with any of the technology needs that they um, are running short of so that their students have um, adequate um, technology to participate in distance learning. Thank you very much. Uh, Twee? Um, overall, I think um, the district has met the needs for many of our low-income students who might not have um, computers, laptops at home. Um, the issue, I think, has more to do with um, internet connectivity, Wi-Fi, affordable inter internet connectivity. Um, it's, it's possible, I can also see a scenario if this distance learning is extended, that schools become um, hotspots for um, internet connectivity. Um, I think it's really hard to make sure that all of our students' needs have met when there's so many other um, mental health issues they may be dealing with. Um, so, but I do think for now, distance learning and all of the needs that are, all of the internet needs for our students, um, we're doing a pretty good job. We could be doing better. Thank you very much. And Stephanie, um, how, how do you ensure that all students have access to the technology and resources they need while uh, distance learning? Um, one is by being proactive. I feel like our district has been doing a good job of ensuring our students have the technology and um, being able to uh, survey to understand what families and if families have a, an issue with connectivity and being able to help support them with that. Um, when I did meet with the director of student services, I, he did let me know that we were in a good place with making sure our students had the laptops and things of that nature. Um, as it relates to distant learning and having the things that we need, we can talk about technology and internet, but some folks and some students don't have the learning style to be able to continue to do remote learning. And so what resources are available to those students and those families to make sure that they are not missing out on the, the learning that they need this school year? Thank you very much. Uh, Twi, if you'll answer this one first, um, what are your thoughts on teaching racial equity in the classroom? Oh, that's my specialty. Uh, I used to teach diversity and equity courses to pre-service teachers. I think it is a very necessary part of teacher education and also uh, educating our young people about the racial, linguistic, uh, socioeconomic diversity in America. Um, for many students of color, um, they may not know about the histories and the contributions of their ancestors, people of color, in American culture, and um, you know, it it shouldn't take 
going through K-12, not knowing about it, and then only learning about it in the university or go a college level, I definitely think um, there needs to be um, anti-racist curriculum, and not just in, as a history or social studies course, but interdisciplinary, that is, it's throughout the different subject areas. Thank you very much. And Blythe, uh, what are your thoughts on teaching racial equity in the classroom? I think that it's very important. And I think that recently society has given us a call to action. It's time that we really put in place um, things that make all our students feel equal and safe. I feel like it's important that we provide learning opportunities for our uh, teachers on how to work with students and um, approach the racial equity issue. I think it's important to listen to our community members about their concerns, their new ideas, and to really listen to how parents, students, and teachers feel. And then I also think it's important to provide educational materials and curriculum that really just reflects the diversity of our students. Thank you very much. And Stephanie, what are your thoughts on teaching racial equity in the classroom? For one, our school district is diverse and that is not new and it is growing. So as a diverse school district, it's important our learning programs and curriculum reflect this. So whether it be the books or stories we share in the classroom um, related to uh, race, ethnicity, but also gender, physical differences, and those of the sort, um, to be able to start um, being ready for the real world, in essence, and celebrating multicultural and uh, multicultural and difference. Um, when it uh, relates to racial equity in the classrooms, I also think about the teacher pipeline, which is very important. It's critical that we recruit and retain diverse teachers um, within our school district but also um, the pipeline starts in the classroom and that's a student seeing a teacher that looks like them. And that makes the uh, possibility real that people like them can become teachers. Thank you very much. And Stephanie, if you'll answer this one first. So we're gonna widen out from the classroom now in this question. What does it mean to you to have a commitment to diversity and inclusivity? And how would you apply, apply that in your role as a member of the school board? So Stephanie? Yeah, I mean, diversity is a fact, um, and inclusion is an, is, is an intentional act. And I have a background in diversity and inclusion as well. I led a statewide award-winning diversity and inclusion program for a major health plan here in our state. I've also had a, a management consulting firm where I help to train leaders and others around diversity and inclusive leadership. Um, in order to be able to achieve that, we need to be okay with differences and being able to have crucial conversations. But starting that when we're young, because Brentwood Union School District is the pipeline to our high schools. And we wanna make sure that we are educating our future leaders to be ready for the real world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Blythe? Can you repeat the question, please? Oh, certainly. Um, what does it mean to you to have a commitment to diversity and inclusivity, and how would you apply that in your role as a school board member? Uh, I think it's very important that all our students feel represented, that they feel included, and that they feel seen and heard. Um, I think that by discussing all of our um, diverse differences and um, really working together to listen to each other and meet the needs of all of our students and all of um, the diversity that we have there. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Twee, please, uh, what does it mean to you to have a commitment to diversity and inclusivity and how would you apply it uh, as a school board member? Yes, uh, first I'd like to uh, look at the curriculum, whether it does reflect a commitment to diversity that is, um, does it reflect the his history and contributions of people of color? But also if we're talking about diversity and inclusion, we need to also look at academic achievement gap. Is there an academic achievement gap uh, based on race? Um, you know, how are the students of color doing? We need to look at the expulsion rates or um, disciplinary measures for students of color, are they being um, 
expelled or you know for misbehaviors um, at a higher rate than the white students. Um, Last year, I wrote a national PTA grant, and uh, we implemented a digital safety online learning safety class to encourage uh, parental engagement in the schools. And it was a bilingual education program. So Spanish English um, seminar for parental involvement. I think that's one of the things that I think I can really contribute. Thank you very much. Diversity and, and inclusion. Thank you. Now, our next question, Blythe, if you'd answer this one first. Uh, I know I heard this in opening comments, but I'd like uh, to be sure that everybody understands your position. Do you support Proposition 15 on the ballot? And if it passes, how would you prioritize spending these new dollars? Um, I do support Proposition 15. I think that um, we are going to find ourselves um, in financial strain in the years to come. So I think by passing that measure, we would be able um, to have some support with our funding. Um, I think as far as fund, how we would prioritize the funds, I think that um, we really would need to look carefully at the needs of our students and our district and um, put the money where it will best affect students directly. Thank you very much. Tweed? Yes, I definitely um, encourage people, voters, to vote yes on Proposition 15. It will bring in much needed funds for our public schools. Um, I think we did a really good job in ensuring that there no child was going hungry during the pandemic shutdown. Um, so we, we're dealing with food insecurity in our community, but we also need to deal with some of the mental health issues that uh, arises when you have job losses during a pandemic or, you know, um, unstable family situations. I think mental health issues, need we need to address that in our schools. Um, I think it's it will bring in so much, much needed funding for our schools in terms of um, our schools have always been, uh, well, have been underfunded for the last 30, 40 years, and um, we need to really make sure we have the resources to increase our teachers' salaries and make sure that our classroom sizes are um, manageable. Thank you very much. And Stephanie, do you support Proposition 15? And what should be done with the new funding? Yes, I do support Proposition 15, I believe that thriving schools definitely support and lead to thriving communities. And I wanna make sure we keep it better in Brentwood and that includes our school district. How I see the funds being used is definitely a priority around our student learning and outcomes. I also know that we have a special needs program that is growing and we will see an increase in enrollment over time. We need to be able to help uh, support our students with special needs, in addition to other students, as pointed out, there are some persistent achievement gaps for certain students within our district. And it's time that we look at how we have been um, allocating funds to address these disparities and these achievement gaps and really bring in the voice of the students and the teachers and even communities um, across the board to be able to help support and understand if we're spending our resources in the right manner and where we can do better. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, unfortunately, our final question has come up. We're running out of time. So uh, Blythe, if you'd take this one on first, how do you characterize the district's relationship with its employee unions and is there room for improvement? I think that there is always room for improvement, but I would say that we have a wonderful relationship with our unions and that it's really important to continue to work collaboratively with them. I think when we all can work together, um, we come up with the best outcomes. So I think it's important that as a board, we always make sure that our teachers and staff uh, feel supported and um, that we have their back and that we hear from all the different unions on um, any concerns they have and address them in a timely manner. And work with them um, to create great outcomes. Thank you very much. Uh, Twee, uh, how do you characterize the district's relationship with its employee unions? I think um, for the most part, 
this district is supportive of teachers, but I really feel that they can do better in ensuring that teacher salaries increase. Um, Brentwood teachers are, compared to neighboring cities, teachers um, are not paid as well. So in that sense, I, with all of the work that they've done during this pandemic to get ready to teach online, I really think that teachers have gone be, uh, above and beyond what was required. It, it's like a, the first day of school all over for get, again for many teachers. And I really think that um, we need to show that appreciation by um, increasing their pay. Thank you very much. And Stephanie, how do you characterize the district's relationship with its employee unions? I believe we can do better. I believe our district can do uh, definitely better in supporting our teachers. When we look at our budget, when we look at teacher salaries, I take it back to how can we recruit and retain quality teachers? And we need to be able to uh, have a uh, transparent uh, budget that actually shows how we are um, uh, compensating our teachers and uh, things related to the budget and our teacher salaries. Um, as a prior uh, union member, I fully support and I'm proud of um, employees being able to bargain for their rights. Um, and so, yeah, I totally support our uh, unions, and I do believe that there's opportunity to do better. Thank you very much. Um, now, each candidate will have one and a half minutes for a closing statement, and we will begin with Blythe Lind. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to connect with voters this evening. I am running for the Brentwood Union School District Board of Trustees because I have a deep passion for education and I care deeply about our families, our students, and our teachers. I believe it's vital that we as a district provide safe, healthy, and equitable opportunities for all of our students. I'm willing to do the hard work to put in the time and give the effort that this position requires. As a parent, former teacher, and a current board member, I can bring my perspective, experience, and leadership to the board. I will work collaboratively to make decisions that will prepare our students for the future while continuing to uphold the high standards and values our district has had for so many years. I would greatly appreciate your vote for me, Blythe Lynn, for another term on the BUSD Board of Trustees on November 3rd. Thank you. Thank you very much, Blythe. And now, Stephanie Williams-Rogers. Thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. Ballots are being mailed right now, and I need your help to make sure we have the right representation for our stu students, families, teachers, and staff on Brentwood Union School Board. We can do that by voting for me, Stephanie Williams Rogers, as one of your next school board trustees. Let's work together so our students receive the quality education they deserve. I am a parent, a healthcare management professional, and an advocate. I'm involved with advancing educational equity for students and I have a record of working hard to deepen engagement in our community for improved decision-making and results. With your help, um, on November 3rd, uh, I will be elected to help ensure our school district is responsive to the values, beliefs, and priorities of our community. I'm someone, again, who will turn over every stone to ensure we find the right solutions for improved student learning and achievement. So when you get your ballot, please vote for me, Stephanie Williams-Rogers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. So these are three of the four candidates for two seats for the Brentwood Union School District. Um, as we said before, Carlos Sanabria is unable to be here this evening. So thank you uh, for your participation in the democratic process. And did we make the final statement? Oh. oh I'm no, sorry, Twee. I, I <laughs> Please, Twee, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to uh, reach out to the voters about um, who's running for Brentwood Union School District. Um, I am a strong advocate of public education. My whole life's work has been in revolving around um, helping students, helping pre-service teachers, and now I hope to uh, get your vote to be on uh, Brentwood School Board. I'm a parent 
in this school district. I'm uh, very um, motivated in working with others in, and collaborating with others to make sure that our students' needs are met, our teachers are supported, and uh, we have that. We continue to have that stellar uh, public school district that is the coveted school district that everybody wants to move to. Um, I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd for Brentwood School Board. Thank you. Thank you very much. So these are three of your four candidates for two seats on the Brentwood Union School District. Uh, again, uh, Carlos Sanabria is unable to be here this evening. So thank you very much for your participation in the democratic process. I want to thank the candidates, Contra Costa County Libraries, the Elections Department, and Contra Costa TV for co-sponsoring tonight's forum. For further information about candidates, issues, and voting, please refer to the websites cocovote.us, uh, cccLib.org, and votersedge.org, the League of Women Voters site. And be sure to vote on November 3 or earlier. Thank you very much.